Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with... Elizabeth Helley. And... Tyler Hymanson. Oh, and it's new franchise day. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> we couldn't be more excited to talk about <laughs> anything. Bring other on than... this new franchise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring <laughs> it on. No. Uh, yeah, we're done. We're done with the bring it on movies. We're over it. We're into something totally different. Going all the way back to 2001 with the Spy Kids franchise. Kicking it off with the original film this week right now. But before we get into that... Uh, we always, you know, like to talk about, you know, how we can hear from you. How can you yes. write to us? Please email us uh, your memories of this franchise to sequelrights at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at Sequel Rights. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, reviews go a long way. It's another also a great way to reach out to us. If you have suggestions for other franchises we should do, leave them in the comments and we will definitely see them if you give us five stars. That's right. All right. Well, we are excited to get into this, so let's do it. Between driving the kids to school. Mommy's mimicking me. Mommy's mimicking me. And putting them to bed. Lights out. Good night. No one would ever guess that mom and dad are the world's top secret agents. Do I know you? What'd you do? Your parents are international spies. I was assigned to protect your family, but something's gone wrong. My parents can't be spies. They're not cool enough. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys. I'm just really excited to be talking about this fun. Did you? What did you just say? Movie. You said you guys. You guys. You meant to say you spice. You you spice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just excited about this movie um, because uh, it was super fun, and I uh, absolutely was ready for that. Um, well, <laughs> I was guys... ready for whimsy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have you guys seen these movies before? I have not. I've only seen the third one. What? Which which <laughs> is a weird uh, thing in that I believe I have seen mostly every other movie in Robert Rodriguez's filmography, other than this, and I have yet to to see Battle Angel. But um, uh, I've never seen it either. Yeah, we'll talk later uh, when we get to that episode about why the third movie is the only one I've seen. But um, oh, okay. okay, yeah, I mean, you know, Spy Kids. It's out in two thousand one. Uh, at that point, you know, I'm in high school, a little bit. Just I'm just, in high school. I'm too cool. Yeah, exactly. Just aged a little bit past this, like yep. uh, to the point where you know my friends might be like, "Why are you seeing that movie?" If I want to go, you see you want to take your little brother? <laughs> no, I. I don't think he went to go either uh, <laughs> as far as I know, but, but, uh, I don't know. It gave me a fun opportunity to watch it now for the first time. Yeah. Uh, which I feel was... like we should take Jordan now. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, do it. let's, <laughs> let's make Jordan, spy, let's kids spy kids number one in the box office <laughs> this weekend. It could happen. Uh, it was number one in the box office for three weeks straight. That's right. Uh, when it came out, this movie was wildly successful. Fun sequel rights trivia. The movie that knocked it off of uh, the number one spot was Bridget Jones's Diary. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the franchise wars have started. No, um, that is that is really funny. Yeah, movie was super successful. Um, and I think for good reason. Uh, so you guys, so neither of you guys had seen this either, right? Correct. Mm -mm. Nice. Well, this will be fun. What is Spy Kids about? Well, <laughs> who wants to take it? <laughs> they're kids, but they're also spies. <laughs> oh. so it has a, it has a really, it, it starts by setting off its own world. Like this, the parents are spies, for uh they're not a government it's like a spy agency so it's something akin more to archer or james bond there's actually some very strong venture brothers vibes <laughs> yeah. to this whole thing it's the oss uh, in a way <laughs> yeah <laughs> in a way that's very exciting for me um yeah i think that it starts with kind of a, a fantasy retelling of how they actually got married 
um, that is a story being told by the mom to the daughter, and the daughter thinks it's this imaginary story, uh, but we're supposed to be led to believe that this is more or less how it went down. Maybe there were some less <laughs> helicopters, and that- maybe there weren't heart-shaped parachutes. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> there were. This whole, uh, this whole like fairy tale story thing was like the perfect way to just like kick off like right away like oh this is what this movie is going to be about when when she yeah. mentions that uh you know they're spies and then at the wedding like up until that point everything was totally pretty pretty normal and then at the wedding when it's like you know both of us were together and so that means everyone came after us and then you see like a million what looked like you know, 500 helicopters, helicopters coming zooming. through and the like, helicopters are chasing them and decapitate <laughs> yeah. statues. Yes. And they're flying faster than you're like, I don't think helicopters can fly that fast. But, <laughs> but uh, actually, but, I actually did like literally laugh out loud when the parachutes, uh, yeah. 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 I was like, seriously, it was super funny. It well, was like great. It's, it's a visual tone that I think is rare these days where it's just like completely madcap, almost Looney Tunes esque, but oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's for kids. Like it's, it has a style and that's why a lot of the, this movie is crazy visual effects, heavy, mm-hmm. super ambitious for a 2001 movie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it, they, they hold up, up because they have a certain style to them like they're still part of this world in a way where like there's still some things that are cheesy and look bad or or they look bad in retrospect 20 years later like most movies from 2001 do but i think this one has a little bit more legs to it just because it so strongly leans into what exactly it's trying to be it's just this is a movie for kids it has its own style it's going to be wacky it's going to be goofy and we're also going to throw in some of the freaks from uh basket case yes <laughs> basket yeah. case two and three i was like we're like the only people in the world that are situated to notice this similarity. <laughs> yeah. and i like googled it and everything there's only like literally one blogger that's pointed it out before <laughs> they he do look shockingly the similar way. like he watched basket case and was like it's the booglies from spy kids (laughs) but i i looked it up and there was one guy who worked on basket case two (laughs) as a makeup artist he is a puppeteer on spy kids Uh Uh, Uh, uh-huh amazing I got to believe that there's some connection there because they look exactly like the they really do. I say freaks in quotes because that's what they called themselves in Basket Case 2 and 3. I mean, I would not be surprised if Robert Rodriguez was a fan of those films. So, yeah, um, that makes total sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, because like, like how they sorry, like the, yeah. how those Basket Case mo- movies were made are like famously Robert Rodriguez is the person who's like, I shot everything. I edited yep. everything. I'm, you know, I'm the director. I wrote the score, like whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's super gorilla. And like, you know, his first film, El Mariachi, he made with short ends and, a, and they did the sound on a tape recorder, like in the exact same style as those old, you know, Basket Case films. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And yeah, his name, yeah, exactly. Like you said, his name is all over this movie uh, yep. in the same way as he even, you know, helped with the VFX and yeah, he oh, yeah, he's edited the visual it, supervisor. camera operator, <laughs> yeah. everything. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's like, like the, uh, you know, he, he shot it. He's a cinematographer too. And the pastor in this opening marriage sequence is Guillermo Navarro, who is uh, just a world-class Oscar winning uh, cinematographer. Who's just an extra in this movie. Yeah. He, well, it, I mean, I think he did the, uh, it says that Guillermo did the uh, Navarro did the cinematography. Um, oh, did he? Okay, great. Okay, yeah, good. he's like I think his, his son's in the movie too. Yeah, but he, like you said, nice. he he shot like uh, Pan's Labyrinth and Pacific Rim yep. and all this Guillermo del Toro stuff. Um, so that's the kind of pedigree you have behind this movie, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I totally agree about the effects. Like you know, watching it, it it's the kind of effects that I feel like a lot of times we would be joking about, but um, I feel like just the way the tone of this movie, like it all fits together and yeah. doesn't feel out of place at all. I um, mean, we're talking about you know, this is this is 2 years after the Phantom Menace. I actually mm-hmm. looked up what won visual effects for 2001 the year this came out Lord and it's a Rings. bad it's yeah, it's a bad example cuz it's Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but this probably cost like a fraction of Lord of the Rings. Oh, but no, here's the thing. Lord of the Rings, they made all three movies for uh, like $111 million. So yeah. this movie's actually on par. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, 
speaking of the the tone of this movie, I had like I I know that the the movie I'm going to reference here came out way after this, but it totally felt like um, I was watching something like a. Uh, like a Scott Pilgrim for kids or something yeah, yep. where it's like just this like super high energy and so much stuff is happening. The movie's only 90 minutes long and there's like so much stuff happening in every scene and things are just bouncing around and, and uh, you know, everything's moving really fast and people are spinning on merry-go-rounds like crazy. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the, like the kinetic nature of everything. Well, you guys, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have a minor in popular culture (laughs) and I took a class at USC on Latin American magical realism. And Mm. while, of course, Latin American um, and and, you know, those who have moved to the United States later have a propensity for magical realism. It's not exclusive to them, but a lot of Latin American stories have magical realism. And this one is definitely like a modern uh, version of magical realism for sure. Um, Because yeah, like the, the sets and the design is like one of the best parts and it's all ostensibly real no one's like this place is out of this world you know like it's <laughs> yeah, like what is all this? of it they, they just accept <laughs> all these like magical heightened elements just as being part of the universe yeah it's somewhere between like peewee's playhouse and like a buck rogers like like teleplay <laughs> like yeah. it's awesome the uh the movie like every scene uh is like filled to the brim with like insane creativity and like just so many fun props in the background and stuff that like the kids will look at and walk by and you'll be like, Oh, why did they stop? And I want to see what the heck that thing does. Apparently. Like, so there's these, some guys, uh, the, the henchmen are, are the thumbmen. Yes. They're made of thumbs. And apparently thumb the, thumbs? Thumb yeah, thumbs. the thumb thumbs, <laughs> they're apparently uh, based off a, a sketch that Robert Rodriguez would make when he was a kid of like, <laughs> you know, like bad guys in his, you know, comics and stuff like that of the thumb thumbs. Yeah. Everything going on with the, uh, with Mr. Floop or whatever his name is in this movie, <laughs> um, is really dark. <laughs> if you, if you, uh, yeah. if you yes. look in, I was like, wow. Uh, if you kind of sit and think about this, it's a little bit scary. Uh, maybe if you were a kid, you might be terrified of getting turned into a Fugly or whatever. Uh, I'm terrified now. Not <laughs> yeah. so much of the Fuglies because I'm used to them now from Basket Case, but the Thumb Thumbs are horrifying to me. <laughs> like I may have nightmares tonight about them. What about what about the nurse who was just made out of fingers? <laughs> yeah, that, that I, yeah. too. I was like, I why? Mean, why was there a sexy one? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't get it. So I was like, okay, so are all female Thumb Thumbs like? Do they have like acrylic nails like this chick did? Right. Like so, all of the thumb thumbs that we see in the movie are they all male? Well, yeah, they're they're ring rings because they're ring fingers. That scene, that, that, <laughs> that or scene, dex 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 index fingers. Sorry, yeah. dex, dex. <laughs> that scene was amazing though, where where you get to see like inside the assembly room of the thumb thumbs because they're robots. They're not like actual thumbs. Um, they're all robots, and it was just like you know, you see that they're like being assembled by a giant robotic hand and all this stuff. It was really cool. This movie has the energy as if a kid who spent like all, like he was at an art camp all Saturday. Right. And he spent all day making this drawing and packing it with all these details. And he came home and he wanted to tell you every detail about like (laughs) what he drew that Saturday. And a screenwriter was just like, that's fantastic. Hold on. Like, let me just type all this down. Like, uh huh. And then who? And then what happens? Oh, he's a spy. Okay, great. Like, 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 like hold on. Yes, this is amazing stuff. It's funny. Like, that is how this plays. Yeah, it's funny you, you said that because I actually found an article just from earlier this year. There's actually a couple Spike Kids articles from earlier this year for whatever reason um, from March 24th on Polygon that uh, tries to coin the term Spy Kids Energy. Uh, as kind of like, uh, you know, it talks about movies with spy kids energy and it says kids on a fantastical adventure together with bold, bright aesthetic choices and a sort of disregard for logical convention conventions in an attempt to appeal to kids tastes. Hmm. And they list other well, movies like Willy Wonka and Matilda. And- so yeah, there's a clear raw <laughs> doll, uh, Yes. you know, influence here. Mm-hmm. And you know that Alan Cumming probably his whole life was like, I want to play Willy Wonka. But then like <laughs> everyone was like, no, you can't play Willy Wonka. And so then Robert Rodriguez was like, 
yeah, sure. Be Willy Wonka. And he's like, yes, you know, <laughs> give me the <this> suit. <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. <laughs> uh, it was just so creepy that he had a TV show that had real people on it that were mutants. And if you read, and there's a virtual room. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for all we know, the Teletubbies are real people that were mutants. Uh, but, oh, I that's mean, true. like, that's here's true. the thing like, this show is weird as shit, but it does an amazing job of just like parents like watching kids' shows and being like, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, and I really appreciated that, like, the relationship issues that Antonio Banderas was having with his son uh, was not sort of the easy way out of, like, be a man, man up, you're too girly or whatever. It was like, no, like, this show's weird. I don't get it. <laughs> and, like, you're letting people walk all over you. It had nothing to do with, like, masculinity. And Yeah, nothing at all. And he was so. just, and then, like, and even when he, like, tries to go out and, like, he's like, ah, like, my <laughs> son's being bullied. I'm going to, like, go say something. And it's like, oh, wait, there's bullies for adults, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that whole, like, that... even though he's, like, <laughs> the world's most badass super spy, it's like, yeah, I don't know, but that dad, that white dad's wearing a polo shirt. That that whole daydream <laughs> sequence where he throws the dad through the uh, window yeah. and then like is cheered by a bunch of kids and he's like, "Yes, I'm amazing." Was uh, <laughs> really funny. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Um, yeah, so I appreciated that that was like the conflict that they were having there, and they didn't just take the like stereotypical, uh, you know, way out. And then the mom and the daughter, like, you don't shockingly you don't even see this that much in movies like usually the problems between moms and daughters are like huge you know things but most moms and daughters it's just like i'm a teenager and i don't like you right now you know like i want to do whatever i want don't get in my and, business and, that, and that's it <laughs> yeah, yeah like, and that's it that's it and it's like no that, okay yeah i do love you you know like it's <laughs> right. not like you we're, did, we're you, like it's, yeah. it's under the surface it's like it's known but it's like hey here's an eight-year period where i'm just not gonna deal with you yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's not like you know you cheated on my father or you abandoned me right. or you're a drug addict or no it's just like i'm a teenager and i'm, I'm a teenager and i do not need you yeah but however but um, buy me a car <laughs> <laughs> carla gigino is 30 years old when this film was made meaning that you know i mean obviously she's playing older because i don't think she had these no kids apparently she was apparently like, this was a thing so so she voiced to robert rodriguez that she was not comfortable playing the mom because she was only 29 when they filmed it and she was oh, like yeah. that's not that's not gonna be believable and what robert rodriguez said is that uh that his own mom uh was her age and had all of his siblings he just had a bunch of kids very young huh. and had kids that age and that that's kind of how he wanted it okay. um and so that she was eventually convinced to do it but she was she voiced that very same thing where she yeah. was just like i don't know if i should <laughs> be doing this but she does a great job and like her and Antonio Banderas, like he's 40 when this is filmed, and they are both like in their prime. Like <laughs> yeah. they look hot. Like if you had the world's hottest parents, like yeah. I was like, geez, like <laughs> they look so good. You they find out that hot. Yeah. You, when you... she when she was like, my parents aren't cool. I was like, really, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, nobody has parents that look like that. I was gonna I say guess, unless you're Dakota Johnson or whatever. Yeah. You know, right. Like, you you find out that they're spies, and you go, huh? Makes sense. You're not even yeah. shocked. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's like why she I didn't realize, even though they've been telling her that weird third person story about the two spies that fell in love <laughs> yeah. all these years. You're <laughs> just like, I'd let them steal state secrets. Like, ooh. you never happened to walk back out into the room and see your mom pushing buttons on her makeup. Uh, that, that, was the <laughs> that was the funniest. That was the funniest, chintziest build. Yeah. And the yeah. mirrors like rotate like Bzzz. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i thought that they were that her relationship with the kids was markedly really really good um and antonio Banderas was good too with the kids but she she like even though she was so young at the time and i don't know if she actually had i don't think she had any real kids at the time um like it she does a really good job i like yeah. how you say i don't know if she had any real kids it's like she was taking care of an egg at home or something. <laughs> yeah maybe i don't know i don't you know, know the, if she has kids now those practice I, babies you get yeah you know. yeah <laughs> uh yeah because i had never seen her in like any movies and the first movie i ever saw her in because since i missed the whole spy kids thing was that movie uh women in trouble like i saw it at a screening at usc and a q a with her and the director and she plays like a really badass porn star 
Uh, so mm-hmm. I was like, this lady's in Spy Kids? Okay. <laughs> You're like, huh? Yeah. Whatever. That's yeah, funny. I remember her uh, uh, in Sin City. Mm-hmm. Mm. As I feel like the first time that I knew of her. Yeah, that sounds about right. She's great. The, yeah, the family dynamics, uh, you know, of this like Latino family in this film that is a big, huge hit at the box office is awesome uh, to have going on in 2001. Yeah, There's and a great... it's not. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say it's not like played like that's such a huge element of their lives. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, yeah, they, yes, they are very, you know, they are Latino. The names are Latino. They speak some Spanish, you know, but it's not like played like this is a movie for, you know, Latin American people. It's like, no, this is a mainstream movie for all kids. And the characters happen to be Latino. Latino. And yep. yeah. it, was, it was really, really a big deal at that time. They just happen to live in a fancy mansion on the ocean cliff. Yeah. <laughs> just like a normal family. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, pretty early on, um, it turns out that they're going to go back out in the field to rescue, to try to figure out what's going on with these disappearing spies from the OSS. Um, OSS. And uh, yeah, they head back out and then almost uh, immediately get hilariously captured. <laughs> <laughs> Like right away, immediately. Yeah, by a giant, uh, a giant, well, a giant shark thing that's never go, seen again. <laughs> they didn't want to go back, but Devlin asked them. Oh, and that's right. We don't know who Devlin is, yeah. but when Devlin asks you, you do it. You 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 want to participate? You do it. Oh, Devlin called. Oh, okay. Oh, Devlin called. Devlin called. Um, and uh, that's when we get our first. Uh, is that when we get our first celebrity cameo? Shortly after they get captured and all the red alerts go off in the house, I believe I believe so. We There's get, a lot of we celebrity Cheech, cameos. We get movie. Cheech Marin coming well, in. Well, yeah, I mean the wedding you can see. Uh, oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, you can see Danny Trejo. Yeah. And you know what? I just looked this up. This is uh, uh, three years before The Incredibles, um, which is uh, you know similar. I feel like that Incredibles two is more in line with what's happening in this movie, but you know it's it's a fairly. Um, fresh take on all of this stuff and also like it is so a hundred percent catered towards kids mm-hmm. in a yeah. way that's not it is unapologetic in a way that most movies like even most disney movies aren't <laughs> yeah well even especially the incredibles is a midlife crisis yep. you know man movie whereas yep. this is really from the point of the view of the kids and the parents are just very secondary yep yeah it's really funny even the uh, even the other, there, there was a moment that make, makes me think about that too. Like at the end, towards the end, when they're running around the hallways with, uh, with Mr. Floop, Alan Cumming, and they're all supposed to be running together and the parents get captured. And even his character turns around and goes, where's mom and dad? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like he's, you know, <laughs> like he's one of their kids or something. Yeah. So there's the confusing dynamic. So there's a super villain who is Willy Wonka who is making killer robots, but also making a children's TV show that uh, the brother of the Spy Kids family is obsessed with. It's a confusing Judy. plot <laughs> that makes complete sense if you're a kid. Like... Oh, yeah. Uh, there, yeah. There's a villain behind the villain and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that apparently the government is just like, yeah, you know, periodically we hire uh, crazy inventors to make like new weapons for us. Well, not <laughs> not just any government. You're you're talking about Mr. Lisp. <laughs> yes. It's, no, it's Lisp. Lisp. <laughs> I have I have this I have this recording. I love this this moment in the movie because it was like it, it it reminded me of like a uh, you know like a like a naked gun or airplane type yes. type moment where um, there's this interaction here. I have it right here. Have a seat, Mr. Lisp. You'll be more comfortable. It's Lisp. <laughs> it's one of the one of the moments where I really laughed out loud because <laughs> it's played like so straight, and no one laughs or anything. It's just like it's just great. Yeah, my parents' favorite one is the Muppet movie. Like that's a myth, a myth. Yes, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> that same lady always comes in the frame. Yes, <laughs> uh, who is who is this person? It's Robert Patrick. Yeah, Robert Patrick, the T one thousand oh, yeah. himself. T2. And we've got Terry Hatcher in that scene as well. Yep, Terry Hatcher is going all in on this movie. She is <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Yeah, 
Uh, and even though they're like in a spy place that has all this equipment, like they can't find her damn wig. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, the speech she gives when she busts into their like secret hideout, like, oh, don't you remember me? I'm friends. Look, I have a key. And oh, listen up and all this crazy stuff. Like she's just going like at 100 the entire time. <laughs> and, she, and she like tries to, you know, lead them on. And and she she introduces the idea of this. um so the the flu the fug is it fuglies it's fuglies right Fugly. I always want to say fluglies but it's just fuglies. The fluglies they apparently like one of the reasons I thought it was really terrifying was that it seemed like they were mutated and there was no way of bringing them back because it's right. like yeah. their brains get scrambled and I'm like oh that sounds bad uh, but apparently they're they're speaking in this like type language but apparently you can play it backwards and they're actually saying stuff, which is real scary. And I love the moment when she's like uh, explaining about the, the Fuglies and how like, Hey, you, uh, you know, that song that they sing. And I, I just want to play this clip because I thought it was really funny. You know, that cute little tuneless song, the characters sing, play it backwards. We're trapped. Loop is a madman. Help us. Save us. Loop is a madman. Help us. Save us. <laughs> I thought it was funny that like they're still singing even though they're like trapped. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, can, like later on in the movie when she, when he talks to one of the other who is actually Mike Judge of all people, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, is able to speak in full sentences. They're in the dungeon. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's not yeah, like they're forced to sing songs. It's so funny because yeah, the speaking forwards they're like, and then they play it back and it just sounds like a normal guy talking. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. <laughs> Um, well, we're kind of jumping all over the place, but, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. the kids, uh, you know, I, I, loved the scene where they go to the, they end up going to the secret hideout and, um, safe house. the safe house. Yeah. And they get to kind of walk around and see all the crazy gadgets that their parents have there, like the rehydrator and, and the jet packs and all this fun stuff. And I was like, man, uh, you know, if this movie had come out when I was younger and I, I probably would have been totally into this movie, like this is like a kid's fantasy basically to to be able to play with all these cool toys and stuff oh totally and they're all like made like they it looks like <sighs> it's hard to describe this and and I, I guess i'll try with you know how when you're at like an arcade when you're a kid and it seems like the most glorious amazing things that you could get is what you can turn in for tickets mm -hmm. at an arcade mm -hmm. to get like oh my god like it's a it's a Tesla coil or whatever, you know, whatever chintzy thing that they have back there. And like, as a, but as a kid, like it's the coolest thing that you could ever get. And this workshop is built from things that you could have gotten from prizes at the arcade, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but very deliberately in a way that makes it feel like, wow. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 at one point they decide to, you know, fight back against Harry, Terry Hatcher and their, and her goons. And, uh, they hold up these like, I don't even know what they were, but these things that look like they're just going to flail things around if you pull the trigger. And she's like, you don't even know how to use those things. And they're like, you're right, but hey, they're heavy. They and then they just, heavy. Start, yeah. they just start throwing <laughs> shit at them. I thought that she's was really so funny. shocked when they say that. Too. Yeah. Like Terry Hatcher's like, <gasps> <gasps> um, another great. So it makes me think there's like a nuclear battery in them or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, th this safe house uh, scene also plays host to one of the, uh, most hilarious images in the entire film. Uh, I don't know if you know what I'm speaking of, but there's this part where um, uh, Alexa Penavega's character, uh, Carmen, goes uh, to kind of try and catch the guy who's walking away with the third brain, which we haven't even talked about whatever that is at the moment. But he's he's starting to walk away the third brain, and she, like, jumps over this table and is jumping slow motion. And like a, another of the, the like bad guys tries to go grab her and he like jumps up and misses and his hands go up oh, and yeah. hit the, and hit the fan and his fingers just go like, you know, you think in your mind, like, Oh man, his fingers are going to get chopped off. But instead they just go like thud, 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 thud. <laughs> on his, and he's like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> I thought that was great because like as a kid, that's like one of the most terrifying yeah. things that you like, could, that could be in your own home is like right. you know, putting your hand in the ceiling fan or any fan really. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that that's how she gets away from that bad guy is pretty hilarious. I, I thought I laughed really hard at that too. Cause it happens so fast and you're just like, <laughs> wow, they shot that. That's amazing. Yeah. Pretty funny. 
so yeah, they're off to uh, what's Floops Castle place? Mm-hmm. Floops Castle. There's His a whole shark castle. water acidity <laughs> situation. <laughs> this is really. Well, yeah, there's there's a jetpack escape from the yes. uh fr- they don't know where they where, right, where they quite need to go to. There's a jetpack escape from the safe house. Uh is Cheech Marin dead? <laughs> like he just kind of disappears. No, he gets turned into they... one of the fooglies. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah he does. So I, don't I know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was like I was wondering like what happened to Cheech? They didn't like save him at the end or whatever. Uh but you know, I looked it up on the Spy Kids w- wiki and it just says, like, he ostensibly was changed back at some point after the events of the film. <laughs> like, they don't, they don't I show them. He ch- shows up again. I, I would yes, be surprised if he As a human. Yeah. Like, they don't actually show them changing anyone back, even though uh, Antonio Banderas gets changed back as well. That's but true. Yeah. I don't think they, they just kind of show the aftermath of it. They never show it happening. <laughs> yeah. So we end up with them. They are, is this when they're in San, uh, San Diablo or before they there i don't quite recall but they'd have a jetpack escape um the kids are out and they have a tracking device but oh, they don't know right, how it works first. and they find a uh uh it's a machete product <gasps> yes oh my god i had no idea that this is where the machete no, character me came from <laughs> me neither i mean i don't think that they're related actually well yeah um it's the same character, but Robert Rodriguez said that they take place in two alternate universes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's just really funny that, yeah, th- there's all this like machete stuff in this movie. You know? so, yeah. And yeah, in so- the alternate universe that we live in, machete has a donut shop and a taco place <laughs> <That's right. and laughs> shop, and another taco place. And he's, and he's a top chef judge. And he yeah. goes by Danny Trejo. It's really weird. Probably just trying to hide his identity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's so funny. Um, but yeah, I love that he's in this movie. Um, and I also love that it, it turns out that he is kind of like the, the cue of this movie or something. He like makes all these crazy gadgets and, uh, and I is also their uncle. Yes, allegedly. that's right. That's I just a fake uncle. <laughs> they already have one of those. That's right. <laughs> I just love that. Uh, all of his gadgets throughout the movie are like, kid themed like he's made all yes. of these <laughs> like he's made like They're electro like shower shock balls bubble and gum. like never yeah. like everlasting gobstoppers and shit yeah like shock bubbles that you can blow at people and like one of them is a crayon that like has acid powers or something yeah <laughs> yes so amazing uh, i thought that was really funny <laughs> and they and yeah he's built this like you know um this jet plane that could probably only fit children i don't know <laughs> or one person i guess is he leaving on it no, no, sadly. He did not. <laughs> He's not leaving on it. Um, but yeah, he kind of, uh, you know, fills the kids in a little bit on some more history of how he's related to their dad. And then, uh, yeah, they escape on the, on the crazy plane, <laughs> the crazy plane. I I make our escape on a crazy plane. (laughs) I (laughs) I Oh God. Um what else? What else? Oh, I wanted to talk you get you mentioned that shark scene uh Yeah. I I I mixed them up out of order, but yes. Um Shark scene in Lava Girl. Shark scene, yeah. (laughs) Uh, just, uh, this scene where they, uh, they land in the water, um, and are trying to enter the castle. And it turns out the entrance that they're going through is a cave filled with sleeping sharks, which I thought was a hilarious image. We it's get, amazing. We get like sharks a very... can't sleep by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they go through a very long explanation to tell you why. Yeah. But these sharks can sleep because the pH levels in this part of the water are are so high or something, yeah. Which, guys, I have to tell you, as a child, I was so annoying about sharks. I read every single book. <laughs> I was like Timmy in Jurassic Park with sharks, right? And <laughs> this is the type of thing that I would think of, like, all the sharks are asleep, but why are they asleep? Okay, like, let me tell you why this is happening, because, like, I think there's a reason, and it's like, that's what makes them so evil. They're thinking about these things. It's the only I think about. <laughs> um, <enough>. Well, <laughs> it's funny... Um, apparently, uh, you know, there was a bit of a, a bit of a 
internet controversy about this scene <laughs> earlier this year. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, back around that same time as the Polygon article back in March, um, there were there's an article here uh, from in the know.com, but I saw it was also on yahoo.com. Not that those are super, okay. super reputable or anything, but it says people are freaking out over this Mandela effect scene from spy kids. Um, apparently what happened is some kid, uh, some kid on TikTok uh, posted a video saying like, Hey, uh, I just watched spy kids and I don't remember this scene with the sharks happening at all. Like from what I remember is like that they dropped into the water and Carmen goes, the water's warmer in here. And then Junie says, Oh, sorry, I peed. And apparently a ton of people were like, Oh my God. Yeah. What? I don't remember the sharks at all. This is crazy. Uh, one of those things. Um, yeah. I kind of like the Berenstein bears. Situation. Well, could it be that that scene was edited on television or something? Well, yeah. What? I mean, uh, according, cause I'd looked more into it and they do mention it even on the, um, Wikipedia, but it doesn't say what the specific scene was, but on the Wikipedia, it says that, uh, a special edition with a deleted scene was released in theaters on August 8th, 2001. Um, and that there were plans to release this special edition on DVD, but they never materialized, but that the version that came out on Blu-ray, which I believe would be the same version that's up on all the streaming services did include that scene. So it uh, seems I like watch this on Amazon. I rented it. Yeah. On, um, did you watch it on YouTube. Tubi or whatever? Tubi TV. No, it wasn't on that either. Um, I, I rented oh, it on Fubo. Apple. Yeah. That was Fubo. <laughs> Fubo sucks. They're sketchy. But I just thought that was funny that there was like this crazy, you know, uproar about like that scene wasn't in the version that I watched. I feel like I did not see the sharks, honestly. What? But you know, I was also maybe working a little bit while watching this movie. So. Uh, <laughs> the sleeping sharks scene I thought was genius. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, the sharks wake up, obviously. Well, yeah, because it's like. He had to pee in the ocean. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, if you're in a wetsuit, it stays in there. <laughs> Gosh, that's, I didn't think about that. That is true. Oh, like, they're like they're they're wearing like body glove like wet, mm, wetsuits. Okay. But yeah, no, yeah. If you pee in a wetsuit, uh, you're you get to you get a nice layer of pee in there uh, that stays <laughs> with you. It does not leave. So don't pee in your wetsuit friends <laughs> well, when this... they uh, there was one point where they escape in that like submarine thing and it goes under this island that has like a hole in it and <laughs> yeah. i was like that's so cool i want to swim through that hole like because i'm like a psycho when it comes to like weird rocks and ocean things, oh yeah you know? like uh like when we we're in costa rica i was like i gotta walk into this cave and like uh, no one else is walking into it and i was like <laughs> i'm going into the cave and then i like go back there and then like a huge wave comes and i see basically that you cannot walk through the cave and i'm like Never mind. <laughs> like, turn back around. Turn it around. Like, where are you going? I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> no cave yeah. for me. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, let's talk a bit a little bit about the evil master plan going on in this movie. We mentioned that there's yes. uh, to be you know, the number one children's show. That's Wait, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> there's secret agents getting turned into fooglies, and the reason they're getting turned into fooglies is because they're trying to. Uh, find out where the third brain is. But why yes. do they need the third brain? Because they got all these dumb robots. Someone, it was, some, yeah, it's, it was someone's <laughs> idea to make child robots. Right. That look like well, they're no, straight out of was Children Monk's of the Corn. Idea. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was Minions. Mr. It was Minions. Tony Shalhoub, Mr. Minion. That's, Banana. uh. But yeah, far before Despicable Me. <laughs> yeah, here I got I got a clip of him too. Minion? I assure you, it's Mr. Minion now. <laughs> oh. He's so great. I, I assure so you. So this it's is Mr. after Minion. Men in Black, but before Monk for Tony Shalhoub. Yep, he's still going all out craziness. Um, yeah. So uh, they've got these robot kids who are super strong and look, you know, like exact copies of real, real children. There's the a president's where, daughter, yeah. a general, just a random general's daughter, a general's daughter, <laughs> the prime minister's daughter. It doesn't matter from where. Um, yeah. But they got At no some point. They said the prime minister's son, and it was like a very Asian little boy. And I was like, <laughs> 
I, I like I thought they were talking about the UK, but then I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, there's never been an Asian prime minister of the UK. So, like, which Asian countries have prime ministers? I don't know. Does Does Hong Kong have a prime minister? I mean, uh, not anymore. I, I have no idea. Uh, anyways, we should move yeah. on from this. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, that was the only Asian person in the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the you know everything works on the robots except they they don't have brains. And so basically, basically, I guess everything works on them except that they can't talk, really. Otherwise, they can understand English and, you know, take commands, fight people. They just can't. And fight the best spies in the world. That's right. They just can't talk. Um, and They can't uh, pretend to be daughters and sons. We, we find out, yeah, we find out that, uh, you know, uh, Antonio Banderas' character was part of some secret research group that was trying to build brains for cyborgs or something yeah, yeah and he was like the researcher too he's like not only is he a spy he's like yeah. the brain technician <laughs> i love that scene where they're showing all the different it's called the third brain because it was literally like brain number three out of ten that yeah. they were working on and I, I love the scene when they show all the different like what look like science fair projects that the people are working on that are the different <laughs> brains so funny um yeah, so the whole thing is they need this brain so that they can re- build a child army to go <laughs> kill a bunch of people, I guess. Go kill people. Mr. Lisps demands it. Mr. Lisp. Yeah. Mr. Lisp. And uh, I did, I liked, um, you know, how, so um, Minion puts Mr., uh, I keep forgetting his name, Foogly. Floop. Floop. No, those are the bad guys. Floop? Floop. Floop puts Mr. Floop in the virtual room, which is like uh, like a uh, Star Trek. Uh, type <laughs> yeah, room. yeah, it basically just makes him God, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and 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 like the kid goes in there to save him, and but like before he saves him, he's like, "Wait, I gotta know, like, how do I make my TV show better?" And he's like, mm, "Your TV show needs, needs kids,", kids. <laughs> and it's like. Oh, uh, which is like a very meta uh, thing, I guess, that Robert Rodriguez is saying, like, you know, it's kids movie. Where are the kids? Like, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, this movie is like fully with the kids. Um, yeah. Don't give he, me Frankie Muniz as Cody Banks. Give yeah. Me kids. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everyone knows he's a grown man already at that point. <laughs> um, sure. He's no longer in the middle or whatever. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, this the TV show that that Floop has is so weird, it's and horrifying. it's it's added it gets added weirdness by uh, you know a little help from Danny Elfman himself. <laughs> there's yeah. basically a there's basically like a deleted Jack Skellington song in this movie, <laughs> um, which was very disturbing and weird. <laughs> So did you did you look at the score of this movie? Because like there are three heavy hitting oh, yeah. uh, composers that have credits in this this film. Yeah, you got it's you crazy. got an Elfman. Mm-hmm. You got a Debney. Mm-hmm. You got a Gregson Williams. Mm-hmm. And then you have uh, Robert Rodriguez himself doing most of the songs anyway. <laughs> and Los Lobos, Los Lobos don't yeah. forget. Um, uh, yes, my, oh my Kovo spy. <laughs> it's crazy, but like, yeah, but Danny Elfman does get like a special, like bigger credit that says like, yep. you know, Spy Kids theme and Floop song by Danny Elfman. The song is so creepy. Uh, <laughs> I I have it on the I have it on the soundboard if you guys want to hear. It, but if oh, you're, I if you're too traumatized, to we don't have to hear. I think ah, let's hear it. I think the listeners, uh, it's a little bit on the longer side, but here we go. It's a cool, cool world, all you little boys and girls, and some mean, nasty people want to have you for their supper. But if you follow me, you can all be free, free, you can all be free. It's a bird on a big TV, if you dream, if you dream, if you dream, my dream. Full of selfish, mean, nasty people, nasty, 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 but there's a way you can make your day. You can laugh, you can smile, you can come and stay a while. You can dream my dream, you can have it all with me. You can dream my dream, you can dream my dream, you can dream my dream. My dream. <laughs> it's... I like how he's just shout singing at the Yeah, end. and he's like, nasty, 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 dream nasty. My dream. <laughs> I dreamed a dream. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, you can tell that like Danny Elfman recorded vocals and then was like, here's how you should sing it. And then Alan Cumming yeah. did the same thing. Um, I mean, yeah, it really does sound like a rejected Nightmare Before does. Christmas song. It really does. Which was what year? I don't even know. Like 99 or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh so, no, that had to be early. It had to be like 92, I feel like. Oh, well, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know mm-hmm. when it was. Yeah, maybe. Anyways, right. it uh, it definitely sounds like a rejected Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, if if, if you had uh, if, if if I had no idea already going in that Danny Elfman was involved, I would be like, I'm pretty sure it's Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Yeah, ninety three. <laughs> oh, ninety three. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this is way earlier, but or after that, there's um, like almost no Danny Elfman scores or songs that you can't tell they're Danny Elfman. That's true. Correct. That's true. Just a couple, which of them maybe like, some oh. people like that about him. <laughs> well, I mean, you can say the same thing about Whoa, John Williams. throwing some Danny Elfman. You can't shit. say the same thing about John Williams. Yes, you can. <laughs> uh, not every single like one. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, there he has some of that issue as well. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know who this his this show was for, but apparently some kids liked it. There were action figures and everything. I I like that the choice was just to embrace that it was like it was the the legitimacy of this show was put solely on uh the the young gentleman actor uh who loved it and believed in it and yeah. it worked because of that it was something that was strange and weird and we weren't supposed to understand it but the kids of this world love it in the same way that i'm sure my parents were befuddled by me watching freakazoid or whatever else thing that i was i, I thought was the best thing in the world and they were just like what like he's an earthworm and he's in a suit I'm like yeah Ew. he's earthworm jim and you were like yeah but mom it's executive produced by steven spielberg <laughs> <laughs> and then they heard the song about all the states and they were like it's fine yeah <laughs> you're like oh well, that's animaniacs yeah but freakazoid, right. freakazoid was freakazoid also, was uh, also uh, steven spielberg. See, i don't know why steven my spielberg. mom was like cool with animaniacs but like not any of those other shows it was all about the, <laughs> how how it looked like if the animation style was <laughs> somehow like grittier or crappier she'd be like don't watch that show it's bad i was not allowed to watch ren and simpy i could watch i could could watch rugrats i could watch all real monsters no i enjoyed that dog like that's probably why i didn't see this like it's not disney you know like it's like everything disney like that's nothing nothing more salacious than yeah you're you're like troublemaker studios i've never heard of that uh company yeah (laughs) (laughs) that moniker um but uh, yeah, so eventually everyone converges on the Floops Castle for a big rescue. Which is amazing. Floops Moving Castle. Yeah, the fact yeah. that um, they it looks like a Ghibli. Place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they built this. They built this whole set and everything, and yeah, it looks straight out of like what they have sitting in the Universal backlot for Whoville or whatever, <laughs> like stuff <laughs> like that, like crazy, but crazier, crazy wall fixtures and. I loved this moment where we, we get it twice and it, it makes no sense. I, I don't really understand what's going on here, but there is a scene where first, uh, you know, the parents are trying to escape through and they get to this one hallway where when you walk over the floor, <laughs> it starts to fall and disappear like a bunch of puzzle pieces into like a pit. And Antonio Banderas is like, I can make it. I'm going to jump. And he jumps and lands flat on his face on what looks like, oh, it was like a video floor. Like, it was all a trick. Ha ha. But then later Dude. in the movie, the kids experience the same thing. Yeah. And Carmen yeah. jumps, and she falls through like, find my parents. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, well, I guess she died there, because how else is she going to survive a fall like that? Which I don't understand what up. was going on in that scene. It's Chekhov's video floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that on MTV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in Paris, there's this really ugly skyscraper that the tour groups will take you to when the Eiffel Tower is closed or whatever. Sure. And you go to like this this viewing deck on the top and they have like a video floor thing there. And I'm like walking around. And so I walk on it. And when you step on it, <laughs> it looks, it starts changing so that it looks like you're falling. And they oh, actually God. have the sound of a person going like, ah, <laughs> Why ah. would they do that? and then, and then there, there's a splat sound when you, <laughs> and, uh, when it h- hits the ground, quote unquote. And I was like, wait, is this video floor? At a family like amusement <laughs> tourist attraction, like showing like what it's like to commit suicide off this building. Yeah, like, what I, the I didn't fuck? Get it at all. I was like, nope. 
Oh, French people, you're so strange. Oh, French, yes, <laughs> very good. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's what that reminded that's me wonderful. of. That's <laughs> wonderful. I love that so much. That's so weird. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that moment. Um, and I'm sure it made kids laugh a, a lot, too. Uh, it's like a, it's like some sort of like roadrunner situation. Um, what else? What else? Uh, uh, well, we, yeah, we, all the, the floopies are <laughs> the fooglies, <laughs> the fooglies, the floopies. <laughs> They're all, uh, secret agents. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Lisp. We have, yeah. I mean, that's, I think we got everything. Everyone's uh, there. Child army showing up. Child army show. And, and you can turn people into the fooglies that you like design. So they turn. There's like a scanner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They turned Antonio Banderas into the one that his son had like drawn out of his imagination. Yeah. As, like extra torture. And then they turned. Um, um, Alan Cumming is also apparently like a master clay sculptor. He can just yeah. like sculpt anything out of this like constantly not dry lump of clay that he carries around <laughs> yeah. and, and then they turn into whatever he sculpts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they even, they even end up using it on Mr. Minion at one point and he doesn't even seem to care. <laughs> it's real nasty. I mean, all of them are gross, but the, it, I, I don't know what it is. Like, I, like, I think it's because the, the thumb thumbs, even though they're thumbs, they also look like toes to me. Oh, and yeah. so yeah. that grosses me out. I'm right. like, Ugh! Like, I think that you 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 hit it like yeah yeah that's, that's, that's why I get like really disgusted by them. It's because they're so well. big. Yeah, they they look like they look more like big toes. You're right. Yeah, it's kind Ugh. Of nasty. Ugh. nasty. Anyway, um, so even though the movie's called Spy Kids, the child star check in was not as arduous as I thought it might be going <laughs> into this. Um, but I also like didn't do everybody. Some of them just like you know we're not all that interesting and of course the two main kids um alexa vega and what's his name daryl daryl sabara yeah daryl sabara um and she's now alexa pena vega um mm-hmm. sh- they are still acting and do and especially he does a ton of voice work and she's still acting in a bunch of things um with her husband also they did like their whole own hallmark movie and everything um but I wanted to look into some of the uh, smaller roles for kids that were in this movie, of course. The Prime Minister? Uh, and I, I <laughs> did not find that one. There's two that I, I just want to point out. Because, you know, if they go on to acting or whatever, like, that's fine. But it's not as interesting to me as the kids that, like, do this as child actors and then go into just, like, wildly different <laughs> they get Sometimes they so go the into two, murder? Yeah. Yeah. The two that I... um that I pulled out here was Andy Bosley, who plays Brat Kid, which is the kid that bullies um, uh, bullies the son in the beginning. Oh, school. yeah. Yeah. And so now he is the head of global marketing at HCL Software and previously held that position at IBM. And in 2017, he made the Forbes 30 under 30 uh, because he was so successful. And there's oh, tons of articles shit. about how Dang. he like came out of the closet and him and his husband live in New York. And it's like, he's like super, super successful. So well, way to go brat boy or whatever yeah, his name way was to go. I guess he was justifyingly <laughs> bullying Junie. Um, do you have one for the, the one, oh, I was going to say, do you have one for the kid who says like, I want a pair of those shoes in Spanish? No, I didn't have uh, that one. But the one I really wanted to do that I did find was the uh, baby version of Carmen. Uh, <laughs> who's in the, um, the fairy tale story in Mm -hmm. the beginning Mm -hmm. uh and her name was addison with a y fair uh but she just in 2020 graduated with her bachelor of arts in anthropology from humboldt state university and her um published research paper was on the emergence of global culture through state media studying the global progression of culture using ulrich beck's theory of cosmopolitanism Wow. So she is very smart. I assume. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds like it. That's or, awesome. Huh. I I actually want to read that. I I'm I, I feel dubious undertones, but I <laughs> <laughs> I did read the abstract, um, and it seems that the theory is something to do with the entire world is really just one global culture. Okay. 
all, all, all on board. Great. Yeah. So I don't claim to actually understand what she wrote, but I did read the abstract. <laughs> you re- yeah, I read the abstract. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you read the headline. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are the two child star check ins that I pulled out. Nice. Those are those are pretty good. Those are pretty happy ones. I like it. I like. Yes. It. Yes. No one's gone off the rails yet. <laughs> yet. No. Well, and th- this one girl. I mean, she was like literally a baby in the yeah. movie. So she's <laughs> exactly. like twenty, or you know, like I think she's like twenty. Probably nineteen. Or like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Um, well, yeah. So they, like you said, uh, they rescue Floop and. Um... Well, yeah, Floop like minion minion betrays Floop. Mm-hmm. He's set into the thing, and turns out that Floop all he wants is to make a good children show. He kind of doesn't care about these robots and shit. And Minion just wants to make this army of robots. Uh, so he comes on their side and everything else. Uh, and then there's this moment where they're all facing down. All these kid robots are coming down. And then Antonio Banderas is like, okay, I have a plan. This is so great. <laughs> you take the hundred on the left. I'll take the hundred on the right. You take the hundred on the center left. And then you take the hundred on the center right. And then his son's like, but dad, there's 500 of them. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else. We are, there's only four of us. <laughs> Enter Machete. <laughs> Cue Danny Trejo through a window. Which I love so like funny. how like they, they, they win the day and they talk about just like, wait, why were we mad at each other? And they're just like, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not he starts crying and Antonio Banderas is like, oh, it's a, a Latino guy figure or whatever. Which like, okay, yes, it's a stereotype. But also like, it's totally true. I, I could yeah. probably think of my own uncles who would do that if they had, you know, had an argument with my dad or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wonderful. Um, yeah. But uh, it turns out that uh, this whole time Floop was working on uh, changing uh, like a binary process on the on the brains to flip all their bad thoughts into good thoughts and vice versa. Uh, And so instead of fighting the the Cortez family, they all run and start like throwing around (laughs) in a hilarious looking cartoon fashion, throwing the bad guys up and down, like like just tossing them in the air and catching them. Yeah, pretty funny. like they were the people who decided to use both hard and soft tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I love the scene when uh, when Floop is like, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do about the the brains and and uh, you know, uh, Carmen is like, can't you just like turn the brains off? And he goes and like, he's like, let me see. And he pushes a button, and the screens are all like, too late. And he's like, it's too late. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> That's a great visual. Just, way yeah, to, uh, so much, it was wonderful. So much... It was just like kids logic, and I was like, I don't know, figure it out, guy. So many yeah. hilarious gags. Yeah, I thought that was great. Uh, so then we end up with the the family at home. Uh, yeah, adventure solved. And robots a, destroyed. And uh, uh, I found the little news report happening on the TV really funny. That it's like <laughs> it's another week with kids out in the world just doing courageous, insane acts of courage. Uh, you know, they show, yeah, they show a kid like single handedly dragging a firefighter out of a burning building. And then he's like, one question is, how are these kids so good at being good? And I thought that was really funny. Yeah. That there's just all these random and they, you know, they're wearing the same costume. They're not like yeah. they're dressed yeah, they're like they're still wearing like their xenon costume. Yeah, they're dressed like weirdos <laughs> or something. So. That does look like xenon, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not Xenon herself, but the other. Correct. Yes. Because her fashion was always oh way- on point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Undeniable. Oh, uh, we did. I think we forgot to mention too that the 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 um the movie's called Spy Kids and like the the robot kids are called like Spy Kids as like a, yes. a brand or yeah whatever. the Spy Kids are not the our main characters yeah fact. which I I did not expect that, that me neither mm-hmm. um and yeah it's pretty much like a happy happy ending everyone's everyone's good the family's back together but. Not but for one more fun <laughs> Not cameo. Not before Devlin has to call in. From from the future, uh, right before his screening of Parasite. 
<laughs> I like that a lot when he was like, oh, and he like took it off his, his eyes. That was really so. Yeah, we get George Clooney as Devlin. He yep. comes in. He has it, he has a black bar over his eyes, but it is so clearly Clooney. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, from early on, and I really it's one of the more fun cameos in any movie because it's so clearly him. And then like he has the black bar, and he ends up just like taking it off as if it was there, like physically. <laughs> yeah. And then he just kind of looks at it and then puts it back on in a way that's <laughs> wonderful it's so funny wonderful yeah and uh yeah they're gonna go out as a family on the next uh the next mission the cortez family so the after credits like i don't get it i was no neither do i it yeah was i also like a don't dolly get it. shot in the hallway and then with like some like kind of like sentimental type music playing or something it was weird it were or like I, creepy music i don't know it was maybe it was we'll odd. find out in spy yeah. kids too I was waiting for something to happen and nothing did. <laughs> and so I was Spy like, teens. Okay. Spy Avengers. Spy Ventures. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, was Robert Rodriguez just like super into that hallway that they built? I, I don't know what the deal was there exactly. Okay, I'm glad that you guys are saying this because I was like, I'm dumb. Like I don't understand. <laughs> no, it was weird. I was like, yeah, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I was like, oh, I'm thrilled. Like, I actually stayed for the credits. Like, I will be like, they're going to yell at me and like, I'm going to have something. And then I was like, I've missed something. Like, it's not going to, this is not good. I mean, if there's any listeners out there who have some insight into uh, yeah. what this is about, maybe you read something we didn't see. Let us know. Let us know. I mean, Alan Cumming should have come out from the corner and been like, you're still here. The movie's over. You know, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just the uh, lead into Alan Cummings fragrance commercial, which if you <laughs> haven't seen, look it up. <laughs> oh my God. It looks like a joke, but it's, but it's not. not. <laughs> He's coming. Um, <laughs> uh, what I believe for a rating system I would like to to call it the machete sour ball, but what was hmm. the what was the name of the actual thing? I can't remember now. Electro. It was like uh, sour gummy. Yeah. How I many machete know. electro sour balls would you give <laughs> Spy Kids? Well, you sure you, you, you sure you don't want to? You know what we're talking about. You sure don't want to give? Uh, here, I've got one more. I've got one more audio. Thing oh, okay, to please play do. Here. You sure you don't want to say uh, out of how many? Oh shit! Talking mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> how many shit talking mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> how many shit talking mushrooms? Would you <laughs> I love. I love that moment. <laughs> oh nope. shit! I mean, I'm, that's like so. You know that kids were like, whoa, she's <laughs> yeah. talking mushrooms. You know, like. They probably love it. And then that. you, yeah, I know for, yeah, like, and then it, it probably ruined parents' lives for like months afterwards where their kids were always like, oh shit, shitaki Talk, mushrooms. Yeah. You can't yell at me, mom. I just said shitaki mushrooms. mushrooms. I, I yeah. never heard yeah. that word before. And the now I'm going to say it all the time. Me, yeah. That's like the director, because uh, he was also the writer, being like, I'm going to give these kids a little something, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so great. It's Put so this great. in your toolkit. <laughs> uh, okay. So you're doing electroshock g- gummies? Uh, no, shiitake mushrooms. Okay, hundred percent. You're correct. I think uh, you know I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hard on this one, and I'm gonna give it nine shiitake <laughs> mushrooms. Um, this movie, uh, I thought it was really fun, and uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's you know a generation. Uh, you know, since I was a little bit older, I'm sure there's a generation where this is like a real touchstone kids movie for them. Um. But I do feel like, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if it's because it came out when I was a little bit older, but I feel like it's not as much in the conversation of, like, you know, classic kid movie canon. Like, these, this is a really good movie. Like, you got to show your kids. I feel like it should be. Um, yeah. I just, yeah, I just feel like I don't hear it talked about as much. Um, and uh, as far as in the, con- I, I hear it every once in a while, people make jokes about it, but I feel like I don't hear it in the context of, like, Hey, you guys remember the first movie was like super awesome and uh, you should watch it even now. I think you'd find it fun. Um, and also, yeah, we, we, you know, we just got done watching a lot of terrible movies. And so this was a breath of fresh air for me. Um, I really love the Saturday morning cartoon vibe, uh, high energy. I was just like, 
you know, it's only 90 minutes. It goes by really fast. So much bopping around on the screen. Um, lots of creativity. I had a great time with this and, uh, I think your kids would like it. If you have kids that want to watch movies, do it. Yeah. I'm gonna, oh, go ahead. Elis. Oh, uh, I also give it eight. Uh, shit. Talking about streams. Um, <laughs> Oh, wait, you gave it nine. I'm going to give it nine. It yeah, sorry. I missed her. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was really good. And the performances were all really good. Uh, even from, you know, the kid actors, too. He got really, like, real. And um, the brother-sister thing was really good. Yeah. Um, very, like, rang true to me. I'm an older sister uh, of a younger brother. So I liked their relationship. Um, but uh, I don't know. Like, I think it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because we like praise this movie for being so for kids. Whereas the Pixar movies are always for adults and then the kids like it. And so there's definitely a place for both of those movies in our culture, like, or both of those methodologies in, in the culture. But the problem is that when those kids get older Yes, they liked the movie when they were kids, but they don't want to watch it again as an adult with their kids. They'd yeah. rather watch something that they know that they're also going to enjoy as an adult. So it's kind of like, you know, back and forth. And so, yeah, maybe you would put it on with your for your kids if you knew that you like weren't going to be in the room. But are you going to like really sit and watch it with them? I don't know. But I, yeah, um, yeah, I do feel like there's a lot of those kids movies where it's like you love this movie as a kid, but like. It wasn't a good movie. Like this one, at least like it came out and, yes. it, and it got good reviews at the time too. Uh, so it's like, you could go back and watch it and be like, oh man, I actually still enjoyed it. Even though it's yeah. clearly for kids. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure why um, it just doesn't have like the cultural cachet of some of these other ones. And maybe that has to do with the fact that it wasn't from um, the either, 80s. You know, Disney or <laughs> right. uh, like one of the big, like, I mean, it was from Miramax, obviously, but it's not from yeah. one of the big studios that's going to be doing tons of merchandising and tons right. of like things for years and years. Keep oh, up. I think that that's a that's a good that's a great point. Yeah, There's not probably, merchandising. Right. Still, yeah, or yeah. there was not their own channel or you know whatever. Which you know, not that I think Miramax should have their own channel, of course not. But uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I think that it would be really cool if more auteur or genre directors like did kids movies that yeah. where they just take out all the adult like you know content that's too racy or too violent for kids and like do a really cool kids movie like this like it's really awesome that robert rodriguez did that and yeah um, it's so awesome yeah like more should do it it would be really cool tyler um i think that's something kind of amazing uh that this movie is live action that mm. there is a live action crazy zany something that exists in this universe i think that we've relegate relegated it to animation in the past 20 years of movies that kind of have this tone uh kind of have this I, I said whimsy as a joke earlier but that's really what it is it's just mm -hmm. something that's just this unabashed attack so i think that i am gonna go with nine uh uh shiitake mushrooms yeah and i think that that it's something that I, we we need more of like we need more of of these crazy pocket worlds because like this movie was not expensive this movie was 35 million dollars <laughs> in mm -hmm. 2001 you know like all the visual effects are i don't want to call them cheap they're efficient they're they're a world that's supposed to look exactly the way it's supposed to look like and i think that there's room for things like this to be made that's not artemis fowl or not something that's trying to make <laughs> yeah. some giant franchise or something else. This this is a franchise because it was successful, but this movie was, uh, it's obvious, was not trying to be more than what it was. No. Um, and I think it's that's really wonderful, and uh, I, I think that there's definitely a space for it. Um, and it's a bummer that there is not, I think that the reason it's not in the canon, I feel like that there's not, movies in the canon of like oh these are absolute classics you have to watch with your kids in the past 20 years like where people still talk about goonies I people know. still talk about like indiana jones i know <laughs> justin i'm sorry um, <laughs> uh uh i'm not gonna out you on this podcast for that at this moment it's too um, late no it's fine but uh you know i i think that it's something that's it's weird how there's not a market for it 
and there's shows that that kind of fill the gap i guess but there's still nothing that really feels in this budget range that has this a level of creativity that is made directly for children with um, big stars and big with big names. stars yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's something that is sorely missed uh, in entertainment. And if we're rebooting everything from Kingdom Come and there's 10,000 streaming services, someone can scrape together $20 million to give somebody uh, free reign to make something that is just for their kids. And I think it would be just as wonderful as this. Yeah, that that uh, that Polygon article that I talked about earlier referencing Spy Kids Energy um, referenced the 2019 movie Dora the Explorer. Uh, oh yeah, the Dora the Explorer movie is as a recent one that has uh, Spy Kids energy. But what I would like to say is that you know the Spy Kids thing is a like totally original, not not like yep. based on any property that existed already. You know, it's like something that just came out of Robert Rodriguez's mind. So it's just like should be lauded for even. And if you even think about it, we're like a little bit too we said we were a little bit too old and For then these. yep so that means the people who are really really into it some of them have kids but maybe not that many of That's them true. have kids and their kids aren't old enough to like if they do they're like toddlers you know so right um so maybe it will come up you know no it's one of those things where it's like the reason the goonies is a thing for us is because it was the age where our parents you know would show it to us or whatever it was or we'd rent it and and all of that so I think that it, there's there's a chance where this movie slides into that canon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, as the uh, as uh, Kenneth Turan, uh, the film critic oh, at the time, oh my former professor, that's right. That's, <laughs> <laughs> the film critic at the time for the LA Times said in his review of the movie, uh, he said, if James Bond could inspire dozens of sequels, surely there ought to be at least one in the works for this intrepid gang. And you guys, he was totally right. There are more Spy Kids movies, including the one we're going to be talking about next week. The Uh, prophetic Kenneth Turan. That's right. (laughs) How did he know? Uh, The movie next week, it's called Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. And, you know, in order to... uh, you know, keep the kids part of the Spy Kids, they... uh, had to put these movies out pretty fast. So this movie is out the very next year. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, and I'm super interested because, uh, you know, I had read that um, I had read while looking up this movie that apparently this movie was supposed to, the original film was supposed to be a lot longer and a lot of the uh, script ideas and stuff that got cut out of this movie uh, are in the second one. So I'm interested to see kind of, you know, what that ends up being and how maybe those scenes could have fit into the original film should be interesting to watch. So and what do you think the island of the lost dreams is? I mean, there was question. already an island of people who were transformed. Like, I don't <laughs> know. Like, it seems like Dr. it could be very much yeah. the same thing. Well, I know I'm really interested actually to see what characters, I hope that some of the side characters come back, but I, I feel like none of the villain type people are going to come back at all. But um... do you think Richard Linklater comes back <laughs> <laughs> as c- cool spy? Yeah, that would be funny. I'm guessing it's another thing that is highly connected to kids and it's going to be about how, you know, I don't know. They're losing their dream. Someone's stealing kids dreams or something. This movie might have more Oscar winners in it than any movie we've talked about. <laughs> this, the original spy kids or are you talking about the next one? The original spy kids. Oh yeah. Hmm. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Could be with all the, all the cameos and everything. Yeah. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, so. do the math. Um, but I don't know. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go the other way and say that the lost dreams are the lost dreams of the now grown up adults. Uh, oh, so we'll see. Like oh, a, like a Peter Pan, gonna, like a hook I type see. situation. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember their well, childhood. Yeah. Until then, uh, this is a, a a short for us four. Yeah. Yeah. For a film franchise. So in the meantime, we're going to need another franchise here really quickly. Eliz, where can people get in touch with us? Yes, please email us sequelrights at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube channel at sequelrights. 
And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Slip your uh, suggestions for what we should do next in there. Or share your favorite Spy Kids memory. Or, uh, you know what would be wonderful if you could send us a sketch of what you think uh, you would look like as a... a foodly? I want to call them Floopians again. <laughs> or what, what we would look like. A Foogly. Oh, what we would look like, yes. yeah. Send us our Foogly versions. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'm going to send one to you where you just look like Belial. <laughs> Belial. Yeah, you're just like an arm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, well, yeah, that's it. That's it this week, you guys. We're excited to be on this new franchise. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. <laughs>